Hey everyone, welcome back to another Anime Kingdom review. See you by the title below. Yes, this is on episode 12 of Boku no Hero Academia Season 2. And yes, sorry that this is a couple days late if you, you know, have not been up to date with my videos. Um, you probably don't know that. I I'm just right at this moment. I'm kind of behind, slowly starting to catch up. So that's a good thing. But yeah, that's pretty much why this is like a couple days late. Um... But yeah, found the time to go ahead and make this video finally, so that's why we are here. How did I feel about episode 12? Um, well, I gotta say, the fight, eh, a little anticlimactic, I'm not gonna lie, but it was still cool. It still had some cool shit going on in the battle. Um, we got to see, like, numerous times with Bakugo just being a complete beast, and just, honestly, if I was going against Bakugo, it'd be more scared of just his attitude. He's, like, literally just a mad dog, practically. I mean, they even had to chain him up and like cover his mouth and everything when they were doing the award ceremony like that part when he came up i was literally i'm not gonna lie i was cracking up like wow they need to do that <laughs> to stop him from of course you know because also he doesn't want to take the award because he doesn't want he doesn't feel that you know that this win meant anything honestly and i totally understand him um you know the very beginning of this episode you get to see with bakugo and how he wants to be the undisputed, you know, first place. We already know that and everything, but he doesn't want to just give in to him. He hates the fact that Todoroki always sees that, you know, Izuku is his is the his rival, is the main threat and everything, and kind of just brushes Bakugo aside like he's not even, you know, one of the top people. The only person that Todoroki ever mentions or ever pretty much looks to that he wants to defeat has been Izuku this whole time. He's like, he even that one time when he walks up to him and says that he's going to beat him. You saw that Bakugo was pissed. And that's because it kind of seems like, you know, Bakugo considers himself one of the best. He considers himself the very top. And when he sees someone like, obviously, Todoki not even, you know, sending a glance towards his way, you saw throughout this competition that Bakugo was getting pissed that he was the one that wanted to like beat both of them and everything and like you saw at the very beginning when he just knocked over the table gate all pissed at Todoki Todoki just kind of like you've been childhood friend you're childhood friends with Izuku right has he always been like that <laughs> you don't talk about Izuku to Bakugo because obviously he was pissed and just ends up walking out saying that he's gonna just destroy him and everything you know um and then of course you have Todoki um understandable as well considering everything that's happened he did of course use his fire abilities during the match against izuku but ever since then he's kind of been unsure and you can see that everyone has said it as well even against his you know in his match against ida he's not the same person he's not as precise he's not as you know he's not all there his head's kind of in a different place because he's still uncertain if he should use his fire abilities he's still uncertain if he should push forward and be a hero because you saw that he wanted to be a hero as well when he said that against Izuku. But he still has something, you know, that he needs to overcome first. And that is, of course, what we saw at the end of the episode with him and his mother. So lots of feels for Todoki. Actually, just a lot of feels in this episode in general with Todoki and his mother, with I um, with Ida and his brother. That part, honestly, I, I, I'm not going to lie, I teared up a little. Because it was kind of, it was not kind of sad, it was really sad. You know, he looks up to his brother, and his brother knows that, and he's like, he feels that he failed him. It's not like, you know, oh, he's hurt and everything, and he's glad that his brother's there. He actually feels that he failed his brother. He lost, and, you know, it, it's sad to think that, you know, obviously, Ida cares for him, and it's not, yes, sure, he looks up to him, and that was a big thing, but to think that the brother more of you know thinking about his well-being and how he's hurt and everything and almost died practically from the hero killer um stain it's more like he's like he felt like he you know failed ida and obviously that's going to have a huge impact on ida like the rest of the episode this half the second half of the episode was more over you know kind of just a little bit of uh moving on past the tournament and everything um, the tournament part pretty much obviously is done now. As we saw, the battle ended up not, you know, like I said, it was definitely anticlimactic in the way it looked like it may have gone badass because Todoki was going to use his fire ability. But of course, he just lets him push him, um, take him out, you know, out of bounds. <laughs> we have to see Midnight's move too. I was wondering what her thing was, why she tore off her shirt during the match between um, Izuku and Todoki. 
and um, I guess it's like sends off a perfume or something of sorts that kind of knocks someone out because <laughs> yeah you saw Bakugo he just literally just knocked out when he was getting pissed off at you know at of course Todoki and you can that's one of the things like I can understand why he's so pissed honestly because yeah it's not a win it doesn't feel like a win it feels like he's still below Todoki because he didn't use his full powers he kind of just gave up and in a way because of that with him using his full powers in Izuku it's kind of like he's behind Izuku as well to which of course we both we all know that you know he hates being behind Izuku, he's been being behind anyone, but Izuku is probably the one person that he definitely does not want to, you know, fall behind. You know, so definitely a huge thing for him. Award ceremony was pretty cool as well. We got to see All Might come down and give hugs and you know medals to everyone. Um, Tokoyami, pretty badass. Can't wait to see more of him. He got third place along with obviously Ida, but Ida wasn't there. Um, then of course he saw. You know, Todoki kind of down in the dumps, obviously, still unsure of himself. But it was nice to see kind of, you know, it, it's sad, honestly, that All Might is more of a father figure to him than his own father. Because the father, I don't know where the hell he was. I thought he was going to get pissed off at that moment when he was being hugged by All Might. But I guess he just left the arena, probably, because he was probably disappointed. That's probably what happened. And then, of course, <laughs> Bakugo takes off the mask. He just starts getting super mad, getting crazy. And then, of course, he just, like... Tries to put the metal on. He's like, no, you're not going in. Just goes into his mouth. And literally, not only in that scene, but when they're in the classroom, he's still got in his mouth. Like, what the hell, Bakugo? What is wrong with you? Even at the very, very end, if you waited to after the credits, the ending, he ends up, like, brushing his teeth. Like, you know, his normal pissed off self, yelling out to the world. He's like, die, 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 germs. It's kind of like a Reaper kind of thing from Overwatch. You know, he's just like, die, die, die. And then he starts talking about die, germs. And his mom's like, Bakugo, don't wake up in the, in the, in, at noon. And then start yelling out. I'd be like that, too. Like, shut up if I was his sibling or something. Like, what is wrong with you, honestly? But... Yeah, it, it really felt like, obviously, the conclusion to, of course, the tournament. And then it kind of, like, a little bit of showing everyone what needs to be. It's more of a build-up episode to what's going to be coming. It, since this is pretty much, like, the second, the first half is now finished. The second half of the season will now start. Um, Ida has his problems, as you saw in this episode with his brother getting hurt. He's probably going to have, he's probably going to be going on looking for revenge to which everyone's going to have to try and help him because he's probably not thinking straight. Todoki's going to have to work things out with his mother. I actually really enjoyed that scene with him going to his mom and everything. I can't, can't wait to see, honestly, how everything is with that. I'm guessing she's kind of like... I, I was wondering why she's still in, like she's in the hospital, but it's probably psychological kind of stuff going on. So it should be interesting to see if Todoki's able to you know, regain everything, help her out. Because it's not just helping him out. As you saw in this part, he said that he wants to help her. And if he's able to do that, then he'll be able to move on, be able to use both his abilities, and of course, be able to use his, you know, become a hero like he's always wanted to. Um, I'm not going to lie, when they showed Ochako, and she went into her house, and she was like, huh, why is it unlocked? And her parents came running out. I honestly, my heart could not take it. I got so scared. I jumped a little. I was not expecting that at all. I was like, holy shit, what the hell? Because it's literally just like, Two people rushing out with red eyes and everything. That part freaked me out a little. I'm not going to lie. It's like so funny. That his knife is probably supposed to be scary. But it was just so unexpected that I literally kind of jumped a little. Like holy shit. And then of course, you know, Izuku with his mom. His mom fainted seven times. New record. Holy shit. You know. But it was cool to see, you know, him talk about what he needs to do as well. Both him and Todoki pretty much talking about, you know, this is their starting line. That's why, of course, I made the title of this, you know, reviewed starting line. Because it's pretty much, yeah, the tournament's now over. And it's now, they are now at the starting line for everything they need to do in the second half. So, definitely excited to see how everything will go in the next, you know, the next episodes. See how the second half goes. Because so far... I love the tournament half. It was really enjoyable. It was really awesome. Sure, the ending, like I said, was kind of anticlimactic, but it was still pretty damn awesome. Great battles, great, you know, crazy contests and everything. And I can't wait to see how now now that we got that out of the way, it was still, you know, it was serious, but it was still kind of kiddish in a way. There was school, you know, in school, they're having, it's a festival kind of thing, you know. Sure, it was an important tournament, but it was a festival. The next episodes are probably going to be much more serious in the fact that we now have that, you know, hero killer staying on the loose, um, looking, someone looking for, you know, Ida looking for revenge, 
Um, he's probably Stain's probably going to be joining the League of Villains and as well, so they're probably going to be doing something that everyone's going to have to stop. Todoki's got his problems. Everyone's kind of got their problems and everything they need to push forward. And then, of course, obviously, it's probably going to be like, since I saw in the preview that it's them picking their names, so that should be pretty exciting to see what they decide to pick their name. Everyone, you know, what nicknames will they decide on? And then, of course, there's also looks like there's going to be internships. So it should be interesting to see who's going to be going with who, because I'm pretty sure easy you know, he can't go with All Might because, you know, he's pretty much, he can't go out being a superhero all the time because he's so weak now. So it should be interesting to see who goes with who and how that ends up working out because it's probably going to be like someone's going to be attacked by a villain or something like that. I'm not too sure, but yeah, it's all I really got to say, guys. Overall, pretty damn awesome episode. Like I said, sure, it was anticlimactic with the battle, but I still definitely enjoyed it. Definitely enjoyed the buildup of what's going to be coming in the future and definitely just like I'm definitely happy that this is just not just a 12 episode season because if it ended here... I'd be kind of disappointed considering how the battle was anticlimactic, but since there is another, you know, second half of the season, definitely excited to see how everything's going to go, and I'm okay with it being, you know, ending the way it did, because it makes sense. It makes sense, and it builds up to what's going to be coming important for all of our, all these characters and everything, so, yeah, that's all I got to say, guys. Hope you enjoyed this Anime Kingdom review. If you have any questions, feel free. The comment below is anything I missed and you want to talk about comment below as well. And if you did enjoy it, give it a like. If you haven't already, feel free to subscribe for more content. And as always, guys, I want to hear your guys' thoughts. How did you feel about this episode? Were you disappointed? Did you feel, did you like it as well? Anime watchers only, I want to hear your guys' thoughts. Source material readers, I want to hear your guys' thoughts as well. And yeah, that's all I got to say, guys. So till next time, see ya. Yeah.